Greetings and welcome to another episode of Emerging Tech Talk. I'm your host, Dan York, and I want to talk about IPv4 and IPv6 today. I'm coming at you from the Miami Beach Convention Center, where the uh, IT Expo Cloud Communications Summit and a number of other events are being held, and I'm speaking at several here. But just across the bridge over here in downtown Miami, there's a press conference happening today, February 3rd, 2011. Um, where the Internet Society, the ICANN, and the Internet Assigned Number Authority, IANA, are gathering to talk about the end of IPv4 address allocations. So let's talk about what that means. Okay, We've all had IPv4 addresses since the beginning of the Internet, the IP protocol. You know those numbers. You know, 192.168.53.56, whatever, something like that. Four octets, four blocks of, of numbers, of digital numbers. And those are the numbers that we use to identify our devices, whether those are computers on the internet or whether they're mobile phones. Everything that uses data and is connected to the internet has, a, has an IP address, it's what we use. Now, the challenge is that uh, there's only so many addresses, right, in the IPv4 space, and we've been running out for years. And we've been talking about replacing it with IPv6. So what's the news today? Well, if you're not familiar with how it works, IANA is responsible for all the blocks of IP addresses, IPv4 addresses. They then have allocated blocks out to regional registries. And there's a num there's uh, five of them. There's RIPE and ARIN and, and a number of different ones that, that uh, allocate those blocks of IP addresses then out to internet service providers, ISPs, who allocate them to individual customers. So, you know, where I'm here on this mobile phone and I've got an IP address, I'm on a cellular network and I've got an IP address on that network who is the ISP who is providing me internet access. And they have obtained an allocation of addresses from one of these regional registries who ultimately got them from IANA. Well, here's the announcement. IANA is out of IP addresses to IPv4 addresses to allocate. There's no more. The pool is dry. And so they are making the final allocations out to the regional registries who will then give them out to internet service providers. What does this mean to you? Probably nothing right now, today. The internet's still going to keep working. We're still going to have IPv4 addresses, and life will continue just as it has for some time. What it means in the longer term is, if you wanted to start up as a new internet service provider, well, uh, you can't get any more IPv4 addresses. So you're not going to see new internet service providers go in there. And if you are an existing service provider and you want to bring on a million, say there's some new device that comes out, you want to bring a million more of those on there, you're not going to be able to get direct public IP addresses. Now, most of the mobile carriers, enterprises that are already use network address translation, NAT, to, to hide all of their devices behind a single public IP address. So you might have a million devices, but they're all using like 10.x.x.x addresses, part of the RFC 1918 block of private numbers, 10.x and 192.168.x, and there's another smaller range too. So you're probably already natted, all right? But what natting does, what, this, what the network adjust translation does, is it puts a block in the way of this device being directly able to use applications with another device somewhere out there. There has to be a network address translation device that's a firewall, a gateway, something like that that is, that is making that. Now the reality is most enterprises, most mobile networks, they're already NATed. They've got carrier grade NAT and they're already set up this way. So on the face of it, nothing's going to change tomorrow. But what it does mean is that for the future growth, if we want to have more devices, you know, if we want to enable every toaster and refrigerator and everything in all of our houses, we have to look at how we can go and, uh, and, and make it so we have more addresses. And the answer, of course, that is promoted by many folks is, is IPv6. Going to a larger address range is a, a, a different address space. Instead of four octets, it's, uh, it's, it's all in hex. It's a much bigger address space and, uh, and many millions and billions more addresses than we'll ever have in that. Today, though, it's really the end of the IPv4 era in the form of allocations. There's no new growth happening in it. It's going to happen in carrier grade NAT, where people are going to put more and more addresses behind each, each last one of those IPv4 addresses. It's probably going to be actually NATed out to a much larger range. It's going to be get progressively harder and harder to get IPv4 addresses and to roll out new services that need globally routable IPv4 addresses. So that's the news. That's what's happening. You can read more about it if you go to our blogs.voxeo.com, speaking of standards, and you look for the IPv6 tag. I'll put the URL in the link and also in, in here in the video. But I've been writing a lot about IPv6, 
And it's really a time to start thinking for that future. It's going to take us a number of years to get there, but, but for that future, are your applications IPv6 enabled? Do you have IPv6 addresses for some of your infrastructure? Can your communications products work with IPv6? What can you do with that? It's the end of the allocations of IPv4 and really the start of when we all need to be focusing much more than the industry in general has been on what is the future. So that's all. Again, check out Speaking of Standards to read more about that. And uh, you can find me at dyork at foxeo.com or this podcast at blogs.foxeo.com slash ett. Thanks for watching.